Hello everybody, my name is Khaled Siddiqui and in this video I'm going to teach you how to use a uh, slim uh, floppy disk emulator. Uh, these are used for embroidery machines and some Tektronix oscilloscopes and other legacy electronic devices or, or I should say older electronic devices uh, that were manufactured long time ago when they didn't have uh, USB flash drives around. So uh, now, in today's day and age, when everything is uh, being saved on USB flash drives, uh, it's very important to be able to uh, save your files on a flash drive versus a floppy uh, because of the uh, vulnerability of floppy disks and their limitations, capacity and whatnot. Now, uh, what you need to realize that these uh, little drives, uh, they come in many uh, shapes and forms and varieties. Uh, and that's why you need to, when, you, when you're shopping for this, you need to buy the one that's advertised for your specific machine because they are all different. They differ uh, with the capacity of their internal memory, the pin layout on the back, the number of pins, uh, their firmware or their flash program inside uh, and uh, each one is different uh, and they're like device specific okay so now uh, let's talk about how to use these uh, the concept of these devices are to uh, giving you uh, the ability to save your files on a flash drive and uh, back and forth without having to ever deal with floppy disks because not that not only that they're very hard to find now they're also very vulnerable and there are too many mechanical motors and whatnot going on in a floppy drive where this is all solid state and a lot more reliable however what you need to realize that there are certain limitations on your equipment on your machine that makes it uh, limited to the capacity of the floppy for example if your machine can only see as high as uh, 1.44 megabyte uh, so that's only amount of data you can see at a time even though if this is an 8 gig flash drive and you use the entire 8 gig to put your files uh, you can only see 1.44 megabyte at a time in case if your floppy if your equipment can only support 720 kilobyte devil density uh, that's uh, as much as information you can see at a time okay now what's important is your files that need to be accessed through your floppy disk emulator with your equipment, older equipment or legacy device, they have to be in the root directory of the flash drive. And their file names cannot exceed more than eight characters. That is due to DOS limitation, not due to the limitation on the floppy disk, but the, uh, on the flash drive, but due to the limitation of your equipment, which is operating with DOS uh, software uh, or operating system and uh, uh, DOS has a limit of um, uh, file names up to eight characters you know that already I'm sure if you're using uh, DOS equipment okay now let's talk about uh, what do I mean by root directory any file that I say have it has to be in a root directory of the flash drive that means that the file cannot be inside another folder it has to be a standalone outside any folders because if a file is inside a folder then that file will be within that directory whatever the name of that folder is when a file is in the root directory means it's it means that the file is not inside any folders it's like out in the open standalone on the flash drive okay that's a uh, 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 root directory now let's talk about uh, the size of each files so in order to make you understand I created some uh, like uh, I should say dummy files here uh, which you can see uh, these files uh, that are right here I created these files they're just like uh, some numbers inside there nothing important but this is like sample files uh, that uh, I have created in order to transfer it to the USB flash drive notice uh, none of these files uh, from here to here none of these files are more than uh, 720 kilobytes so all of these files will work fine 
with a 720 kilobyte double density uh, floppy disk emulator. Uh, basically, all of these qualify to work on a machine that has a, a, a flash drive with 720, um, that has a, a floppy drive with a 720 kilobyte capacity. However, these uh, three or four files up here, they cannot be accessed. For this, you must have a unit or, uh, that uh, is uh, 1.44 megabyte uh, or 1.2 megabyte uh, because it's more than 720 kilobytes. Okay? Now, if there are files that are bigger than 720 kilobytes and you need to have those accessed on, on a machine or an equipment that's uh, limited to 720 kilobytes, then you have to split it in multiple uh, sectors or multiple sections or parts. Uh, just like uh, in the older programs that used to come, they used to be bigger, they would come in multiple floppy disks, like disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, and so on. All right, so the first thing we need to do is, right now, I'm going to show you, we have to format this flash drive uh, with, int, uh, with FAT32 file format. You could do FAT or FAT32, but you cannot do EXFAT or NTFS. And now I'm going to show you how that works. So what I'm going to do right now is I have, uh, this is my floppy disk emulator and this is my uh, computer USB port, PC USB port. So first I'm going to plug this in to the PC USB port. Okay, so there it is. It's plugged in to the PC USB port and now I'm going to format the puppy. Okay. So here is how we do it. Uh, first, uh, as soon as you plug it in, obviously it's going to show up a as a drive. Now I named it floppy, but normally it wasn't floppy. It was, it was a flash drive, but uh, it, that's how it was. It was uh, flash drive, but I named it floppy. Now I'm going to show you how to uh, uh, format it and rename it uh, uh, floppy. So first, what you need to do is you need to right click and then you go to format. Once you go to format, you go uh, to uh, type of format. So you have NTFS, you have FAT32 and EXFAT or external FAT. So I like the default and actually that's what I need to use, the default which is FAT32. Now where it says flash drive, I can change that to floppy. Okay and you click start and you click OK and watch the uh, the drive is being formatted uh, and you have to wait for the flashing to end because right now it's being formatted so I'm gonna wait uh, depending on the size of the drive the duration differs so there you go it says format complete I click OK and I click close and now what we need to do is we need to put all these files into this drive in the root directory so now I'm gonna double click and these are the files that I was talking about that I need to access with my floppy disk emulator in my legacy equipment okay currently both of these that uh, are attached to this PC because I'm teaching you but in, in reality this will be attached to your embroidery machine or to your oscilloscope but just for teaching right now I have them both attached to my PC okay so now I'm gonna grab all of these and drop them right here all the files are being dropped and notice how quickly it's going because right now it's transferring at USB 2.0 speed however once it's connected here it's limited to the speed of a floppy disk and it will be way way slower each file will take like many many seconds in, in some cases up to a minute to transfer because of the limitation of the uh, interface speed of the floppy uh, d uh, drive. The, the interface speed is much, much slower than a USB 2.0 or in this case USB 3.0 uh, port. Now this can support USB 2.0, it doesn't support USB 3.0. Keep that in mind. So your flash drives, they must be USB 2, not 3, okay? All right, so now what are we are doing is we are going to plug this in into here and see how we access it, okay? 
Now, before I plug this into here, I'm going to bring the contents of this to the screen, and that would be this screen right here, and where it says floppy drive A. I double clicked on floppy drive A. These are the contents of this, which is currently nothing, or I should say it's empty. Uh, but watch as soon as I plug this in. As soon as I plug this into here, now you can see the con contents will appear. The contents will appear right here. Okay. I refresh it, right click, and refresh. Okay. So, medium file one, which was this file right here, is now available on the emulator internal memory. Every time you put in the flash drive, the first batch of files totaling up to the maximum capacity of the, of the emulator, in which case it is 720 kilobytes, will transfer to the internal memory. If you need this file, if you need this file, which is right here, you use it. If you don't, you press data in. Data in and data out means data going into the emulator and data coming out of the emulator. This data in and data out does not represent in and out from the flash drive. The in and out is from the internal memory of the emulator. So right now, we would like to enter more data to the internal memory of the emulator, so we're going to press data in. When we press data in, it starts reading and the LED light turns on. And now, where we had medium 1 should change to medium 2 as soon as I refresh. I'm going to refresh, and there it is, medium 2. I'll do the same again. Now notice uh, two of these will not appear together because their, their total capacity exceeds 720 kilobytes. That's why one at a time these go to the internal memory. So let's refresh again. There is our medium 3. I'm going to press data in again. This time, medium 4 shouldn't come alone. It should come with some more stuff because they're only 9K and they should be able to fit together with 627K without uh, exceeding 720 kilobytes. Okay? So the, the, this file will probably come with so many other, will appear with so many other one of these. Let's refresh and find out. Exactly as I said, all the way up to new file, new file number 9 came. Now why the 10, 11, 12 didn't come? Because if these would have been included, then it would have exceeded 720 kilobytes. And it cannot exceed. That's why all of these files came. Now if I hit uh, data in again, the remaining files, which is 10, 11, and 12, will, will go there. And uh, uh, that's what will go there. So. Uh, let's let's hit if if that is the case. Let's find out. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to refresh. There, ten, eleven, and twelve went there. Now, if I continue pressing data in, this whole uh, loop, this whole circle will go again. Now, what if we want to bring a change to any of these files? how do you save back to this? Like, let's say if you're working on your embroidery machine or whatever, and you want to bring a change to the file, how you save it back to the flash drive when using the floppy disk emulator. So now, we're going to learn how to bring a change to one of these files that are in the uh, uh, flash drive uh, and currently loaded to the internal memory of the emulator. How do we bring a change to it and introduce it back to the flash drive? So this, let's do file number 11 now. I double click on file number 11. Okay, let's, see. let's, let's refresh this. Okay, let's press data in for all the files to load. Okay, so I'm going to refresh it now. So these are all the files, and I want to bring them change to number 11. I double click to on number 11, and I'm going to write 
this is a change to the file so that's just to change the file and I'm going to save it now before I, I cross this I have to put this in the right mode right here data out it's in the right mode and then I'm going to cross this and it's, it's going to ask me do you want to save I say yes it's going to save to this and it will disappear now it disappeared now I undo the right mode now if I refresh this the only file in the internal memory is the one that I saved uh, which is file number 11 watch refresh only file number 11 is there and if I double click on it it's after the change I brought to it now if I want the rest of the files I have to press data in for everything to load again to the internal memory and it's going to load now and if I refresh everything is there everything loaded again from here to the internal memory now I took out these bigger files to make the process faster otherwise if I had these files not all of them would have loaded at once because not all of them would not all of them would have fit in the internal memory at once but currently all these files are nine kilobytes each when they're nine kilobytes each combination of all files will never exceed 720 kilobytes that's why all of them load at once otherwise I had to press data in again and again and again for everything to load 720k at a time okay so basically uh, that's how you use this and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask and please like and subscribe